also have hog market analysis this week with University of Missouri Extension economist Ron Plain. It's likely been a pretty good summer for those producers who escaped effects of the porcine epidemic diarrhea virus or any other major problems. As you'll hear Ron say, the most profitable four months in history occurred in March, April, May, and June. While exact death loss totals from PEDV are unknown, any estimate includes million following the number. That's tightened pork inventory and led to incredibly high prices. At the same time, the projections for huge corn and soybean crops have held down feed costs. When we began our discussion Tuesday, we asked Ron to analyze how markets move through July and into August. Well, the kind of the wrong way, Jeff, uh, but that's not surprising. Uh, uh, we saw hog prices right around $130 on a carcass weight basis uh, uh, at the start of July. We're down more like $111, $112 on a carcass weight basis now. Is that following the normal seasonal decline then? Yes, it's not a surprise. Normally, uh, the peak in hog prices comes sometime around June, and we see a fairly steady decline as we move into later summer, and that's what we're experiencing, and, uh, and unfortunately, it's probably going to continue. The high prices that we saw, though, this summer, does that make that decline even steeper? Probably so. We had record prices by huge margins, and uh, so a little bit more of a return to normal is going to give us a bigger than typical decline as we move from uh, June to, say, November. Are producers still uh, seemingly packing on the, the pounds to their pigs before they market those animals? Ah, uh, yes, they are. Yeah, we've seen very heavy slaughter weights this year. Uh, in fact, the last uh, 12 weeks have averaged more than 10 pounds heavier than a year ago. Year to date, uh, uh, heavyweight hogs have added about 3% to pork production compared to where we've been if weights were the same as a year ago. What about slaughter numbers, Ron? Well, seasonally, we're now at the time when slaughter numbers uh, usually pick up, and that's one of the reasons for lower hog prices. And so as we move forward, we're expecting uh, uh, increased hog slaughter, and uh, uh, that's going to keep pressure on prices. Uh, daily slaughter usually peaks uh, somewhere around uh, the 1st of December. Where are the current break-evens for the farrow to finish producer? Well, on a live weight basis, somewhere around uh, 56, 57 cents a pound has been break even. Uh, we're going to see that decline, it looks like, because it looks like we've got an awfully big corn crop out there to harvest. On a carcass weight basis, somewhere around 75 cents a pound of carcass has been uh, pretty where, close to break even in recent weeks. We're off those record highs, though, per animal. Yes, uh, although it's still a very good year, the four most profitable months ever for hog producers were March, April, May, and June of this year. We don't have the July numbers, but it's going to rank right up there with it. August is going to be a good month, but probably not a record high. We expect producers to continue to turn a profit each month for the rest of this year and well into next year. Uh, it's just that probably not quite as good as June and July. Are we seeing expansion in the industry now, Ron, or does that remain talk? Well, uh, it's tough to say. Uh, uh, sow slaughter's been down some from a year ago, but our gilt slaughter data wouldn't indicate uh, uh, much gilt retention. I still think there's so much uncertainty over the PED virus out there that we're not seeing much change in the size of the nation's sow herd. Last time you were on, we talked about the export market. Is the industry still getting continued help from that market? Yeah, Jeff, uh, absolutely. Exports have been up every month of this year. During the first half, we exported 7% more pork than a year ago, and that's despite the fact that uh, meat values, cutout values of pork, has been up over 25% from a year ago. So we're selling more to foreigners at a higher price. We uh, talked a few months ago about Russia and their ractopamine issue with the U.S. Now that they've banned ag goods coming into that country from the U.S., does that have a big impact on uh, United States producers? Well, no. As you said, uh, we have been exporting almost nothing to Russia anyway because of the ractopamine issue. And so we're, uh, we did ship a bit to them in uh, uh, May and June, but we're going to see that drop back to zero. So it's not a big factor on the markets because they pretty well been out of the market for well over a year. How would you describe the effects, the continued effects of the porcine epidemic diarrhea virus? 
Well, uh, it's why we had record hog prices this year. It's, it's also been related to the very heavy weights as producers uh, try to make up for the shortage of hogs. One of the key things is it looks like we're going to live with PED virus for a while, and also it looks like it may be very seasonal with most of the baby pig death occurring during the winter months and less uh, during the summer months, which means from a slaughter standpoint, six months after those pigs die is when they won't be in packing plants. So it really is going to shorten summer hog slaughter, but not have as great an impact on winter n hog numbers.